Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm learning about the Alexander Technique. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. The Alexander Technique to me is one of the most important things that's ever happened in my life. Um, when I was in music school, I was partially paralyzed in my right side from a bad car wreck that left me partially crippled. And the thing that meant so much to me about the Alexander Technique, after trying many, many different things, is it was such an incredible self-help. It helped me learn about these chronic tension patterns that I was carrying, that I didn't know I was necessarily carrying in my head, neck, and back, that was causing me tremendous problems over time. Causing me tremendous problems to the point where I could barely move my arm. Causing me problems to the point where when I tried to play the classical guitar, my thumb would just start shaking uncontrollably. And the interesting thing is that the harder the piece was, the more intense my pain would be, and the more intense my shaking would become. And after trying many, many different things to try to resolve it, like chiropractic, physical therapy, I even got surgery on myself. None of those things would help me get back to the class of the guitar. None of them would help me get back to the life that I wanted to live. Now, the Alexander Technique was invented by an actor who was going, undergoing similar circumstances in his life. He was an actor in the turn of the 20th century who suddenly, up and coming, and doing some great work, but every time he went to go yes. act... Let me grab another chair. Oh, right. I am so late. Yeah. There's a lot okay. of rubber necking on the yeah. highway, so... Oh, no, oh, no, it was too. pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm Travis. Peter. Peter, it's nice to meet you, Peter. Nice to meet you. Peter, you'll also have seen at... Um, oh, you know, I think I saw... Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen him yet, but I think I saw you on the Facebook oh, great. page. Yeah. Well, there I am. Yeah. Nice. I know. Well, whoever's taking all the pictures... Yeah. Oh, Frank Sinclair. Frank, mostly. Frank Sinclair. Frank Sinclair. Well, he's yeah. missing. That the, guy. the great Frank Sinclair. <laughs> Whitney, missed, Whitney missed my presentation on the very so. Yeah. Oh, did you have a presentation? Yesterday. Oh, that's exciting. One million cups. Oh, one million cups. I talked about you. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yeah. Actor. Talking about F.M. Alexander, the actor. So he was going through a similar circumstance in his life that I was going through, where there was no answers to his condition. He was going out there and acting day in and day out, and then after he got done with the gig, he would lose his voice. He'd go on vocal rest, he'd go out do another one, he'd lose his voice. It kept happening to him over and over and over again. And all that was recommended was go on vocal rest, his voice would return, but then you had the problem over and over. So he concluded from that that there was something that he was doing. There must be something he was doing in the act of reciting that was causing his never-ending troubles. And he recognized some physiological things when he went to try to figure it out. He stood in front of mirrors for hours upon hours upon hours trying to figure out what he was doing to his body that was causing his troubles. And so there's a couple things that he noticed of himself. I'll show this in a couple angles. So when he was reciting, he, he noticed a couple interesting patterns that was happening to him. The first pattern he noticed is that when he started to recite, he would load a bunch of tension into his neck and it was doing this to his head. It was constantly, every time he went to recite, he was pulling his head into this, what he called this back and down position. And so what also he noticed from that was when that tension started to develop here, that it didn't just localize in his neck, he, he felt it and noticed it in the mirror happening throughout his entire back. There was this downward compression that he was noticing and feeling. What he described as a shortening of his back and a narrowing of his back, like so. So he's getting shrunk essentially in on himself in both directions. So after he noticed that, I'm like, okay, this must be the solution. Right? I, I need to learn how to stop myself from tightening the neck, I need to learn how to prevent that, and then hopefully that'll cure my vocal challenges. So he worked on that for hours and hours and days and days and days, trying to learn how to recite without doing this nasty, what he called tightening the neck and pulling his head back and down in space, shortening his spine and narrowing his stature. And the rather alarming thing that he noticed was that he felt that he was changing things. 
He was practicing and practicing, and he felt like he was changing things. But to his dismay, when he tried to recite with this new information, he kept losing his voice anyway. To his dismay, despite the fact that he felt like he was solving this, that he was releasing this, and releasing his head, what he called the forward and up, to balance gently on his spine. What he saw clear as day when he looked in the mirror, he was still doing that. This was the biggest discovery of the technique, is that despite his sense experience, despite the fact that he felt like he was doing things right, despite the fact that he felt like he was changing matters, it was clear as day from the results that he kept getting, the continual failure that he was experiencing, and the obvious objective look in the mirror is that nothing was actually changing. This habit that he had wasn't just something he did when he was reciting. He also noticed that he was doing it when he was speaking to a lesser degree. He noticed he was doing it when he was sitting and standing to a lesser degree. It seemed to be something that he was doing all the time. What was worse, all he had to do was start thinking about reciting. He didn't even have to start reciting. All he had to do was think of it, and he would do this. That was causing him tremendous problems. So he decided in that moment that he couldn't feel his way out of the problem. He couldn't will himself to get out of this habit that he was in. The habit was stronger than his will to change. So he had this really, really radical idea that if the very thought of this is causing the problem, then somehow, some way, I need to figure out a way to think differently in this action. Because he noticed that there was something connected between thought and physical response that there was something inseparable between thinking and the physiological response that was causing him challenges. So he had this really, really weird and really cool idea that turned out to work quite well for him. He called it non-doing, or inhibition, which is he was training himself that, okay, I'm going to consciously give myself this thought to recite, and then he would consciously give himself the thought not to do. So retraining mentally, the mental program, the subconscious program that he had of, this is how much tension I need to recite, he thought that he first had to retrain the psychological aspect around reciting first before he could get his body to start behaving itself the way he wanted it to. So he called this non-doing. He would just stand in front of a mirror for hours and say, I want to recite. No. <laughs> I'm going to recite. No. I know, it sounds a little extreme, doesn't it? It sounds a little crazy. But what he noticed is that as he kept doing that, as he kept doing that, at first he noticed this tension wanting to build in his body, but then that tension started to alleviate, move away, move away, and he was able to gradually start actually changing this condition in his back, change this condition in his neck, and get the more appropriate tone that he needed to take the pressure off of his throat. So he did that for quite some time, six, seven, eight months. And before you know it, he had a beautiful resonant voice. He never had his problem ever again. Actors were so stunned by how much better he was reciting and speaking that they wanted to learn from him. Over time, doctors started to bring their patients because they were curious. And then they were noticing, oh, my, my patients feel so much better. They're starting to get a lot better. And over time, he got very popular in Australia with his method, moved to England, and since then, it has helped millions of people with chronic back conditions like I had. It's helped millions of people with speaking and vocal pathologies, breathing pathologies, a whole host of things. So the main lesson that he, there's several principles that he talks about is that use affects functioning. How we use a, this thing called the head, neck, and back, if we use it well, our functioning tends to go quite well. If we learn to use it poorly, our functioning can get negatively affected. For FM Alexander, that was his vocal folds. For me, and the tension that I was carrying, that was a chronic paralysis in my right arm. But there's a whole host of different things that it can affect. This primary control, the limbs go where the back goes. If this back is healthy, the shoulders and the arms will be healthy. If the back is healthy, the legs will be. So 
one of the things that we've noticed is that with Alexander lessons, things like osteo-knee arthritis gets very, very um, subdued from working with it. Frozen shoulder, a whole host of other things. So what I'd like to do with you guys is to practice some of these thinking procedures that FM Alexander discovered. And I'd like to work with one or two individually and just kind of notice what you notice. And then we'll start practicing it experimentally together. And if you don't mind, I'll just speak and meander around the room and work with you guys each individually. Does cool. it sound good? Cool. All right. Cool. Who wants to be my first victim? I'll be the first victim. You want to be the first victim? I'll do it. Peter. I'll <laughs> do it. I want to do it. Oh my goodness. Okay, my friend. If what should live, I do? If what you live, I'll be your second victim. Oh, okay. Well, he might not live. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, why it that's has why happened that people in Alexander Lessons have managed, you know, vanished mysteriously in thin air. Theory, theory. Actually, I might want to be your second victim. Oh, you want to? I want to know where he goes. <laughs> that, that's exploring on a whole new level. Now, now you're that's a character. Like you if you don't mind, if you could just sit yeah. down. That's right, because all doctors have perfect health. Exactly. He's a, he, he heals himself every day, so he is perfect back health. Oh, okay. Well, this is exciting. Yeah, All right, my friend, so what I'd like you to do is just sit and stand a couple times. Back He's chiropractic. I'm a chiropractor. It doesn't mean I have. I mean, I do see my chiropractor weekly, but right. I've also been carrying a lot of heavy equipment. Oh, yeah. Especially today, this morning. Yeah, so. And you're starting a new business, so lots of stress. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, starting a new business, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, can you remind me your name again, sir? It's Peter. Peter. And it's Travis. Yes. Okay. I like Peter. That's a good name, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Rock. They call sneaky. me the rock, and I yeah. went to a place where it's full of rocks. So then you had to get, you had to <laughs> carry a bunch of rocks. It, that's what it's been feeling like. I you feel to, like. You have to do fishing too. Do you fish? Do you catch all the fish? You know, the funny thing. I every time I caught a fish, my grandfather never caught a fish. Never caught a fish. <laughs> so Actually, I'm going to North Carolina next week, and hopefully we'll catch some fish. Oh, Peter did I'll have that do, same problem a few times. What's that? He's not catching any fish. He did have that same problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you just see, need to bring the same. In the first half, they had me, but in the second half of my life, I think I'm going to catch some fish. I hope you will. Yeah, definitely. If you had better back up, you would catch more fish. Yeah. It's, it's, it's... All right, Peter, what I'd like you to do is just sit and stand a couple times. Oh. And everybody, I'd like you just notice what he's, how he's doing this. And this is, of course, no judgment, my friend. We're just getting to know <laughs> We're so I'm, what you're doing. I hope you judge me. I I want you, to... you, want to, you want to be judged, Peter? <laughs> I. <laughs> Yeah, because I want people to see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, what are you feeling in your body, out of curiosity? Tension from everybody watching, probably. <laughs> <laughs> nervousness. Yes. Um, nervousness. What am I feeling in my body? Let me see. I want to see it. Oh. I feel like I'm using these muscles a lot. A lot of push up with the legs kind of deal? Yeah, I'm pretty quad centric. Quad centric, quad I should say. Yeah. So you got the raw quads? Yeah. Peter the Rock with the Pe rock quads. People, <laughs> yes. My, my brother is, uh, yeah. My brother is a, um, he owns a CrossFit gym and he's like very into like seeing movement patterns. So oh. he notices that I'm very like forward, especially if I walk or run, I'm always like using the front part of my legs mm. more than my hamstrings or back. Okay. So, everybody, what I'd like you to notice is when, at the critical moment when he decides to stand, what I want you to notice is what does he do from here in relation to his back? What's going on here? You noticing what he does? He leans forward, but his head comes back just a little bit. His head, come back, his head is going back and down. Yeah. So that's what FM Alexander was talking about, is that the critical moment of action doesn't seem to matter what the action is. When we get in this habit of tightening the neck, what it tends to do is pull us into this space right here. What is the critical moment? Can you? Can yeah, you so the critical moment is the moment of standing, the exact moment he decides so to stand. forward right then he stands yeah. and he puts his head up. And you see how it happens also when he, when sits. he sits. Yeah. I see it when he sits more than when he stands. Huh. That's what FM meant by the critical moment. When it huh. comes time to perform, when it comes time to actually act, if we get in this habit of tension, it will trigger. Huh. It will trigger from any direct action that we take. And everyone has this. 
I haven't met a single soul who doesn't. Okay. Just making sure. I, you know, I, I, I've seen some really phenomenally coordinated athletes when they're using themselves from basketball. For Steph Curry, for example, mm -hmm. he shoots beautifully well. But, mm -hmm. So there's exceptions in the world. There's just not many of them. So that's all you do when you're watching basketball is you watch their head. Yeah, yeah, I, I watch you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I, if you watch um, uh, fighters, do they do the same thing? Because one of the things when you're doing certain techniques, they teach you only the parts that need to move, move your head stay still. And they're right. actually drilled yeah. what they will do to keep your head still right. or to keep things balanced. So that's why I was... You know, I, I haven't watched a whole lot of fighters, to be honest with you. Because that critical moment would be the punch. The critical moment would be the punch, yeah. Take takedown, yeah. and moving your head would be a telegraph. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, I would be, I would venture a guess that they probably are tightening their neck in the critical moment. Yeah. And they're wasting a lot of energy doing so. I never paid attention. I'm just, I, I know the drills because I've done them. That's true. So right. they, but they I, move even a little bit. They can't even touch the neck. So I've never really looked at and that wasn't when I would look for telegraphs. That's not where I would look. Right. So right. if I could go back and do it all over again with this knowledge, you know, you're gonna maybe you're right. Out. Yeah. yeah. My boxing would get better. That's <laughs> you would you would get if you could learn how to um, punch with a free neck. You would probably be about twice as powerful with your punch. Wow. It's amazing how much energy we waste, and hopefully we'll be able to experience that. Go back and do more audio tapes. How little you actually have to push with those legs of yours to get out of the chair. Huh. That's the first thing I want to remember. It's like surfing, do less. You don't need to much, do much. Okay. okay, so do you mind if I start working with you now, Peter? Work with me. Okay, so I'm going to practice helping him get in and out of the chair and help him prevent that moment, okay? And so I'm very jealous of your hair, by the way. <laughs> you have a full head of it, and I, I don't. But that's okay, I'm blessed. Uh, I'll, I'm going to inhibit, and I'm going to non-do for a while. Okay, so... What I'd ask you to do, Peter, is we're going to go through this process that FM Alexander went through, okay? I want you to consciously introduce the stimuli to stand. Right now. Yeah, but notice what he's doing. He's, he's like, I've just got to do it. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is when you consciously introduce it, then I want you to think no to it. I just want you to keep going back slightly and slowly, introducing mentally the concept of standing and then think no to it for a while, okay? And I'm going to verbalize with you. Have you think about standing and then think about not standing? Good. I just want you to keep going back and forth on those two things for a little bit. And invite yourself to do absolutely nothing for a little bit. Good. As you're thinking no, what I'd like you to think is that way up here, now just think it, don't try to do anything. I want you to think about doing less in your neck. Just invite, yeah, without trying to do anything. So just think no, good. And think about your head having space above it, yeah. And keep coming back to that word no for a little bit. Introduce the stimuli, the stand, and then think no to it. Thank you. I'm saying thank you because I'm feeling you releasing your shoulders a bit. Good. Just keep thinking like it's a pulse. thinking no, let's add this idea of thinking I can let my neck be free and I can think about my head easing up in space but it's highly critical that I'm not going to try to do this, I'm just going to stay in the realm of thought now I'm going to move you and your job is to leave yourself alone and let me and keep thinking of your free neck good and your head easing forward and up Good. And think about your whole back doing less 
up in length. Right. Think of your whole back doing less up in width. So that's to say, releasing out from the center to support the hips and the shoulders. Good. You have nothing to do. Let's come back to that wish. No, don't try to help me, my friend. Thank you. Now see if you can keep thinking free neck. If we decide to stand, I want you to keep, instead of thinking about the act of standing, let's think about the process of standing. Let's think in this process, we're just going to not tighten our neck. We're going to think about not tightening our neck. Think about this face and think a little bit lighter, my friend. Thank you. And let's stand. What did you notice with that? That was easy. Yeah. Did anybody else notice anything different? Yeah, it, it, you seemed lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Just neck off. Yeah, okay. Now, are you touching specific trigger points? Are you putting pressure, or are you just feeling these muscular reaction? I'm encouraging releases in this neck, and then I'm encouraging lengthening and releasing in his back. So what I'm encouraging is a passive release, essentially. Okay, okay I'm, not, I'm not after any particular trigger points. I'm after this whole thing called this head-neck-back relationship from here all the way to his tail mm -hmm. to start doing a little bit less of what it's doing. In the, in the Alexander Technique, we call this whole space the primary control, Okay. right? So, in other words, how the health, how this thing is going is going to determine the performance of everything else around it. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Okay. So, eventually we'll get you into sitting. Now, it's the same process now, Peter. Okay? So, I want you to think about this idea of sitting and then think no to it. Just keep coming back and forth. Right. Just keep thinking that no a little bit. It might be a little subtle. Are you guys noticing any are you noticing any shifts in yourself, Peter, as you keep thinking no? It's okay if you're not. Not really. Okay. That's okay. Good. So keep thinking. No. And I want you to think as you think good. And just a little gentle ease in your neck. And I want you to think of your whole back from your sacrum all the way up through your neck. Good, doing less. Good. I'm saying good because I'm feeling your back releasing back in space, which is where we want it to be. There you go. All right, so keep thinking just no, leaving yourself alone. You have nothing to do, my good friends. Good. And instead of doing, we're going to think about doing less in the neck. Yes. We're going to think about doing less in the neck. To allow the neck to be free. To allow this head of yours to release up in space. Good. Yes, to allow your whole back to lengthen and widen. Are you feeling any shifting going on in you, Peter? Slight ones. Mm -hmm. Where's your back going? I feel like my shoulders are coming forward a little bit. My back is kind of just decompressing. Uh-huh. Good. Good. Yes. All right, so we'll think no again. Uh-huh, we'll think no again. Good, we'll think no again. I'm going to invite the thought of a free neck. Now just think it. Try not to do anything. Right. Thought of a free neck. A head that can ease. Good. Forward and up. Yes. Off of the legs. And a whole back that can lengthen and widen. Now if we decide to sit, we're going to see if we can continue to think this word no. This word of, yes, free neck. This word of head. Right, releasing forward and up. And the whole back and torso doing less up. Almost as if you're flowing up. Flowing up off your knees. 
Going up off. Thank you. Now keep thinking that as your neck is free and let's go ahead and sit. Good. What do you notice about that? About the sitting? Yeah. I noticed that he put some force in my hip too. Uh -huh. Specifically the right one. Yeah. And then my neck was just I mean just feeling it. I was very, very neutral. Uh huh. In terms of Obviously, head movement, uh -huh. back movement, and everything. Yeah. It was all just like hips. Yeah, the hips creased and then you came down to the chair, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did it feel on your legs? In oh, I didn't really feel like I was using my legs as much. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very good. Mm hmm. Awesome. What did you guys all notice? He kept his head kind of. Flexed more than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. I think when I saw him before, he was keeping his head up more. Uh -huh. He was going like this. Actually, I mean, but with your guidance too. What's funny is when you stood up, I saw your head go back. Ah, right there. <laughs> yeah. He's not. The moment. <laughs> the critical moment. Yeah. Awesome, Peter. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, my friend. Now I feel worried if I if I stand up. We won't look. <laughs> no, I was like, because my question is, what happens tomorrow when you're not? Yeah. Working with him. Yeah. And what what is the activity to practice this? Mm -hmm. And what is once it's practiced the expected resultant change? Yeah. Well, the really cool thing is that once you start to experience a different movement, it's as if it's starting to re-educate those patterns automatically deep mm -hmm. in the brain. Now it takes a little bit of time, which is why we recommend several lessons before you go out into the world, right? But but um, what will happen is you'll just start noticing you're moving differently because it's already being updated as we speak the minute we're doing this, right? Those movement patterns. But you know how I was keep telling him to think no, think no, and think no? There's a lot of practice like that in and of yourself. I mean, not in huge doses, like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes mm -hmm. there. Doing things like what we call active rest, where you lie down and just encourage your back to continue to release into this tone the same tone that you were experiencing when we had you upright. Mm -hmm. But that 10 it's, minutes could easily become two hours. <laughs> it, could easily, it could easily be three, three hours. Yeah. It could be four, all day. Right. But something that happens is that you know, over and over, you keep practicing this process, it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. Like before I speak, I think no one free neck. I mean, right. It just happens. Right? It's just what I think these days. Mm -hmm. Right, and so that's what we want is to kind of retrain that process. That okay, before you do the action, remember that it's you that has to do the action. Don't just do the action; that you're part of this equation, and maybe we need to take care of ourselves in the equation. And I'm guessing your classical guitar now is uh, kind of ready to go, and, and you're playing well. And yes, playing yes, so. yes. I, the Alexander technique is the only reason I got to finish my graduate work to be honest with you. That's cool. And um, not only did it get me back on the guitar, it was interesting that you know I could always play pretty fast and pretty well, but I had a harsh tone. My, my teacher was always complaining to me, oh, yeah. he was Cuban, he was like, I just can play well, but it's 